What's up guys, my name is Fran, and once again, welcome back. So recently I did my video on the Intel Optane SSD 900P, and looking at the comment section, my testing methodology wasn't exactly well receptive. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video, we're gonna be doing it all over again. Uh, this is gonna be my Intel SSD 900P Redux. As always, let's start with this video by talking about the system we'll be using to do all of our testing. Starting off with the motherboard, we'll be using the Gigabyte Aorus Z270X motherboard. That'll be powered by an Intel i7-7700K processor running at stock speeds, uh, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance memory, a GTX 1080 Ti, not that it actually matters, and of course, the hard drive itself will actually be a variable. Now, as far as the hard drives we'll be testing, once again, we'll be bringing back the Samsung 850 Pro standard SSD, then we'll be changing it up a little bit. Instead of using the 950 Pro, we'll be using a Samsung 960 Pro SSD, the M.2 flavor, of course. And once again, we'll be bringing back the Intel Optane uh, SSD 900P. This time around, instead of using the janky Intel M.2 connector, we'll actually be using a native M.2 connector into the motherboard, and of course, the actual hard drive itself. So starting off with our boot test. Now this is going from a completely powered off state to the operating system itself and being operational. The Samsung 850 Pro standard SSD took about 22 seconds, while the Samsung 960 Pro M.2 SSD took about 19 seconds, and the Intel Optane SSD drive took about 21 seconds. So there was only about a one second difference between all three of the operating systems, and this time around, the Samsung SSD was the faster of the bunch. Uh, next, I decided to test a couple of games and do some game loading times. Now, I tested a ton of games, but the ones I wanted to focus on were the big open world games that actually take quite some time to actually load in the first place. So those two are actually going to be be a Grand Theft Auto 5 and Watch Dogs. So starting off with Grand Theft Auto 5, the uh, Samsung 850 Pro standard SSD took about 30 seconds to load up and get into the game, while um, the 960 Pro actually took about 29 seconds, and the Intel Optane drive this time was the fastest at about 28 seconds. But we're only seeing about a one second difference between all three. And then the next game that I actually did decide to test in the final game was actually going to be Watch Dogs, like I mentioned. So this time around, we actually did see a bigger difference between the standard SSD and the other SSDs. Uh, this time around, the 850 Pro took about 49 seconds, while the 960 Pro and the Intel Optane drive took about 42 seconds each. Okay, so now let's have a look at some synthetic benchmarks. Now, starting off with Crystal Disk Mark, we're gonna automatically disqualify the 850 Pro, just because these numbers are gonna be way off and they don't always translate to real life performance. Now when comparing the 960 Pro to the 900P, we're seeing stronger sequential read speeds coming out of the 960 Pro versus the 960P, which has stronger write speeds. Now looking over at the 4K performance, however, we are seeing slightly better numbers when it comes to the 960 Pro. Now switching over to the Addo Disk Benchmark, once again, we are seeing stronger read speeds coming out of the 960 Pro and stronger write speeds when it comes to the 900P. Okay, so that is it for the benchmarks and here are just some of my final thoughts. The Intel Optane SSD 900P is a pretty decent piece of tech. It features Intel's all new 3D cross point technology as opposed to Samsung's 3D NAND. And as a result of that, it does offer slightly better performance when it comes to write speeds. However, at its current price tag of $370 for a 280 gigabyte drive, it actually doesn't really have good price to performance proposition. If you take that exact same money and have a look over at Samsung's offerings, you can actually pick yourself up a 512 gigabyte variant of the 960 Pro and still have yourself $70 to spare to reinvest into another component or just put back in your pocket. Now, while the 900P does offer slightly better write speeds, I can't really find a scenario where it's worth it to spend the extra $70. But why don't you guys let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Also, while you're down if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one.